Hey everyone, welcome back to the Privacy Wayfinder. I've been a GrapheneOS user since December of 2021, so about three and a half years now. I came from the Apple ecosystem. Um, I was a hardcore Apple iOS user and managed to get a lot of security and privacy settings working on the Apple device. However, when I learned about GrapheneOS and saw what the project was about, I made the shift in December 2021 and haven't looked back since. So this is the main profile that I'm always in. And then we can take a look at um, some of the apps that are in the secondary user profiles. We won't go into those secondary user profiles in this video because I would have to stop screen recording and I don't want to do that on my phone. But we'll take a look at the apps in the settings. So we'll start at the top here in the app drawer. We got a crescent at the top left, a crescent I use to download organic maps, app verifier, and Molly. Molly is basically just a fork of signal. Then we got AntennaPod, which is used for downloading podcasts. The App Store, which is the GrapheneOS App Store, where you can download all of the updates for the stock GrapheneOS apps. And then also this is where you would download a crescent as well. We got App Verifier. This is used to verify the apps installed on your phone. So if there's a green check mark next to the apps, that means that um, it has been verified against the internal database of App Verifier. But if it's not green, I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. Um, you just have to do your own homework and make sure that the links that you pulled these apps from are legitimate links and don't download any like rogue rogue stuff. Next on the second row, we got Auditor, Calculator. These are the GrapheneOS stock apps. In the middle, we got the Falsify Calendar, which I use again without any network access, just a fully offline calendar. Then we got Camera. Katima is an app used to store your QR codes. So if you have like a Planet Fitness membership, what you can do is take those cards or those codes and scan it with Katima. And then it stores those QR codes in the app. And so you don't need to carry those cards around. So if you go to Planet Fitness, you can just open Katima and scan the code that you scan from your, from your Planet Fitness card. And it'll work, which I actually do. I have my Planet Fitness code in Katima. Katima is fully offline, no internet connection. Um, it just scans the code and uh, creates a code on your phone. Moving on to the third row, we got Clock, Contacts, GrapheneOS apps. Cryptomator, I can do a full video on Cryptomator, but I've purchased the Cryptomator app for Android. And it's free, I believe, on Windows and Mac, I want to say. But if you want it on your phone, you have to pay for it, which is fine. Um, I love using Cryptomator to store all of my backup files. So... I'll do another video on how I back up my phone because in a previous video, I saw a lot of comments asking about that. What I personally do is all of the data in each app, I store as a file. So if you go to Aegis, you can, you can export all of your TOTP codes into a JSON file. And then you can take all of those exports from Aegis, AntennaPod, like if you want to save your subscriptions in AntennaPod. Whatever, all of these files, let's say you have 10 files, you can take those files and then you can use Cryptomator to back them up onto a USB drive in an encrypted form. So basically, it's just an encrypted folder where all these files live in. And then to unencrypt them, to restore your backups, you just use the Cryptomator app. You plug your USB device into your phone, you put in your password to decrypt all of those files. And then they show up as normal files on your USB drive. And then you can uh, restore like your Aegis file back into the Aegis app, your AntennaPod subscriptions for podcasts. You can restore them back into the app. So that's basically how I do it. But I can do a full tutorial on that. So next to the Cryptometer app, we have expenses. And I love expenses. You can add in an expense. Um that you have monthly, weekly, every two weeks, every three weeks, every five days, whatever the frequency is of your expense. And it lists all of your monthly expenses in order for you to track. So this is a great app. Again, fully offline, no internet connection needed. Next, we got files, then moving down, gallery, the info, those three are all GrapheneOS apps. KeyPass DX, 
which I have actually moved away from. And I use uh, ProtonPass now, but I still use KeyPassDX for a completely separate work password manager. But all of my personal stuff, I moved into ProtonPass. Then we got Messages, which is just a SMS messaging Graphene OS app. Then Molly, which is basically Signal. Moving down to the next row, we got Music Player, which is a Fossify app that can play all of your MP3s or whatever music you have on your phone. Then New Pipe. New Pipe is used for watching YouTube videos. Notes. Um, this is another Fossify app that is fully offline. You can store all of your notes. And again, all of my notes on here, I export them, use Cryptomator to encrypt them onto a USB drive. And then if I ever need to restore my notes, my phone gets lost, I need to get a new device, it's super easy. I just decrypt the files using Cryptomator again and load up that backup straight back into notes. Next, we got Obtanium. Obtanium is where I download almost all of my apps. Um, so if you don't know how to use Obtanium, you can just search YouTube, type in Obtanium, how to use it, and you can find some pretty good tutorials on that. But this is where I pull all of my apps from directly from the GitHub source. Just to the right of Octanium, we got organic maps, which I hardly use, but it's always nice to have some type of map app on your phone, just in case I need it. Then we got PDF Viewer, the phone app, again, Graphene OS stock apps. Then we got the suite of Proton apps. So I have Proton Drive, Proton Mail, Proton Pass, and Proton VPN. I use all four of them extensively. In the past, I was a heavy Gmail user. And so Proton really kind of helped me to satisfy um, a lot of the workflow that I used to have in Gmail over into um, Proton. So being able to manage all my email, store my files with Proton Drive, manage my passwords, um, and then also have Proton VPN running. Um, it's, it's great. Next, we got settings, then Vanadium, which is the browser, and then finally, WireGuard. WireGuard I hardly use, but I have my router set up at my home um, to be a VPN server. So then if I'm ever out of state or whatever and I need to check banking on my phone, a lot of the banks that I use don't like that I'm using Proton VPN. Like it doesn't let me log in. So if I'm ever out and about, I can utilize WireGuard and connect via VPN over to my home router. So I have a VPN connection to my home and then it connects from home over to whatever website I'm trying to check. So that's all of the apps in my primary user profile, which is the owner profile. And I have two secondary user profiles on this phone as well. So the first one is my work. And with my work, I have um, two apps plus Aurora Store on there. So I, here you can see in the middle, I have Aurora Store and you can see not installed for this user because it's not on my home profile or my primary profile, but it's on my work profile. And I downloaded two apps from there, which is uh, Zoom because there are times that I need to take Zoom calls when I'm away from my computer. And then also True You, which is an authentication app used to get into my work computer or my work email, anything work related, I need True You to authenticate. So those are the only two apps on that second work profile. Now the other profile, we can say the third profile that I have would be my Google profile. And before I used to have a third profile for banking and I would download all of my banking apps from Aurora store, but I've kind of switched away from, from that practice. For some reason, I didn't have a good feeling about utilizing Aurora store for all of my banking or investment or any other proprietary app that I use for personal information. So what I did on that third one, you can see here is I have Google Play services. It says here, not installed for this user because it's not on my primary profile, but I do have it installed on that third separate Google profile, which has Google Play Store, the Google Play services. And in that profile, 
that's where I download all of the proprietary apps from. So I've kind of switched mentality um, and downloaded all of those apps, banking apps, um, and some other apps, which I can show you here through that Google Play Store, just because um, I know it's coming from the Google Play Store. Who knows what's going to happen with Aurora Store or it's low risk, but apps, you know, getting tampered or whatever. I think banking is just too much of a risk for me, but you might have your own uh, thoughts on that. So if we go from the top down, we can look at all the ones that say not installed for this user. So Ally Bank, um, I've downloaded from Google Play Store. I got my Chase app. We got Central Pacific Bank. We got, what else? Uh, Evolution, which is an EV charging um, app. We got QuickBooks Online. There are times for my business when I need to get into QuickBooks quickly and can't wait until I get home um, to address an issue. So I have that app downloaded from the Google Play Store as well. I got my Tesla app, which everyone loves in the comments. Um, and then we got Vanguard. And what else? And I think that's it. So basically all of you know my banking stuff, EV charging app, um, QuickBooks, Tesla app, basically at a high level, all of the proprietary apps are segregated into that third profile um, that has Google Play services and the Play Store running. But ultimately, I'm hardly in that profile, but I do have access to it when I when I need it. But anyways, just wanted to share a three and a half year update and I will see you all in the next video.